Hi everyone, welcome back to Fleece Mills Friday. I'm Michelle from Fleece Mills, here to teach you some life skills with sewing and crafting. Now, as you probably have already known, this isn't the normal setup. We're actually in my living room because there's a lot more space and less clutter <laughs> than in my studio. And behind me are what we're going to be working on today. So these are called sew tidies. They are and can be dated all the way back to the 1920s. I got these secondhand, so I actually don't know um, their specific age on either of these, but I will give you a little bit of information about them. So they are a handle carrying case that sits about three feet tall by about six inches wide. They're mostly made of fabric and wood, and when you open them up, they have lots and lots and lots of storage for sewing things. <laughs> Some uh, jars that are, the lids are nailed to the wood above, lots of pockets, and some even have little fold out tables. And every single one is different. And the reason that is, is because these were actually handmade by the owners themselves. So these came in different kits of what I've been able to learn. Um, they came in kind of make it your own DIY kits back in the 20s and they're just astounding to see all of the little details of what's been put into them. They even still have some, uh, some really elastic pockets and when I first found out about these I just kind of had to have one and I went on the hunt. I found one and it got delayed about two months and I ended up finding another one. So let me open this one so you can kind of see some of the differences. Now this one I have been using temporarily um, until this project. So let me get out of your way for a minute. So they have lots of different um, lots of different pockets and placements for different pieces because again they were handmade by two different people, two different families all together. So as you can see, they have different things. They have very elastic pockets. And what I learned after stretching them for a while, so I was like, how could a pocket with elastic from 100 years ago, maybe 80, still have this much elasticity? That's because they're made with metal springs. So that was something that I found very interesting. Um, a lot of these pockets are still pretty well holding on. Some of the bottles are a little loose. Um, the hardware is a little different. They actually used essentially baby food bottles. They were reusing what they had um, in order to make a holder for all of their sewing things. So a mother would have this in, you know, by her sewing machine, probably in the main living room. And this would hold everything that she needed to alter clothes, adjust clothes, um, fix their kids stuffed animals etc. So I'm going to show you some of the um, main differences with each of them uh, and show you that some of them, some of the pieces haven't stood the test of time either. So what we're going to be doing today is taking apart this green one. As I said, I am using this yellow one temporarily and the reason being is because the spool holders on this side, which are just nails, they're taller and hold my spools better. We're going to be taking this one apart to try to figure out what's in them, what materials I should be getting as I'm going to refurbish one or both of these, maybe even combine some of the pieces and parts to make a sew tidy that is perfect for me. And what I mainly am going to be using this for is for when I go to conventions or when I go to tabling events. Because if you didn't know, we have a full line of accessories for fleecimals, and people are able to come up to us at our table, pick out a plushie, and pick out a bow tie, or a mustache, or a top hat, anything that they'd like, and I will sew it on for them. Um, so this means that I need about 20 different colors of thread, as you can see, um, in order to make this possible. So when I bring this to a convention. I've only ever brought this one once and I will be bringing it to the following conventions um, in the upcoming weeks. 
the one thing that I need to do that these were not designed for is I need to be able to lay it flat in order to bring it with me to drive with. I can't stand it up in the car. So for a temporary uh, solution, I just took a piece of foam core or foam board, cut it to the size so I can wedge it down over the spools so they can't move. And I was able to use little containers so things wouldn't fly away. Um, and I did utilize some of the jars, but these jars are actually all from this one. This one didn't come with any, they just came with the lids. Um, and so there are certain things that I do like about this one, and there are certain things I like about this one. So what I'm going to do is try to combine them to make a perfect sew caddy for me. So come along with me. All right, so let's take a closer look at this one. Now, as I said earlier, this has some foam core, so that way the spools won't move. I've already had to put in um, two nails so I could have the full amount of spools that I need. I actually filled this entire thing for the last convention that I went to. It does have more nails on this side, but these are shorter. And since one side is enough, I really don't see why I need two. Uh, the bottles, the couple of glass bottles that I did bring with me were helpful for holding on to a couple of little things. Um, and these pockets were great for extra snacks and um, for a couple other little things so they wouldn't get lost. In this side, this is one of those spring pockets. Um, I filled it with these small containers from a local dollar store and they were really great. They fit perfectly and they hold everything really easily so nothing's gonna fall out. And these didn't move an inch while we were driving. Down on the bottom, we just have two large pockets, this one with a spring, this one with um, just what looks to be um, chipboard or some form of it nailed to it, um, sewn, it looks like, with uh, fabric to it, but it, it is since ripped and the fabric's ripped as well. And this also had some small pockets inside, but um, having five up above, I didn't really need more down down there. And I did like this large, um, deep spring pocket. I held a lot of fabric in here as well, and it stayed exactly where I wanted it to. I do see myself almost making two of these at the bottom to hold all of the small pieces of fabric uh, that I do want to take with me. Now, while we move over to this one. This one has a shelf built in that folds up. It's just got two hinges there and a small brad here so that way it falls right where um, they wanted it to. It's got a couple of pockets up top as well as a small hook, most likely for some snips. Um, for some thread snips. Now both of these have these little L-shaped hooks, I, I suppose is what I would call them. I really only use them to hold my thimble because I wasn't quite sure what the original purpose was. Maybe to hang some sort of chain or thread between them and hold maybe ribbon or something along those lines between them, almost like a clothing line. So as we move down, this one has a lot of bottles attached to it. And this one did come with the bottles. It also has the pockets just like bef um, on the other one. And this seems to be like either wood. Um, it, it, I think it's got to be wood or some other uh, quarter inch thick board. Um, this one hasn't ripped, which is a good sign. Um, and it does have two of these kind of angled fabrics, most likely for holding, oh, three, sorry, for holding scissors. It's got two large spring pockets on the bottom and a couple more pockets here. This also looks like it would hold a pair of shears. And then I'm not really sure what this one would hold because it, it doesn't, it's very shallow and very wide. And that is the tour of both of them. Now on to the outside. 
this is the one with the green on the inside. It's got this, this old fashioned uh, town square like painting, fa uh, well painting, that's been printed on a fabric. It does have just round um, brads that upholster it onto the outer wood frame. To close, it's got a small nail as well as a little hook that just swings around and hooks on. And it has one simple handle on top. For this one, the one with the, the orange and yellow fabric, it's got this really fun, decorative, bright colored um, vintage fabric with different kinds of, of family emblems, it looks like, on it. I assume that they're fake. Um, but it does have these more intricate brads. It has two handles and it does have a sturdier clasp. Now, what I found using this one once is that you really never hold it with the two handles because the span is just too far apart. So going forward, I probably will only add one to it. All right, let's get to taking this one apart. I do have a few different tools as well as an empty toolbox with little compartments to keep things at least somewhat separated. If you don't have just an empty toolbox laying around, something I do suggest picking up at your next garage sale is a muffin tray. I actually have one over here, but this is our good muffin tray and I will not be using it. Um, these are great for projects where you can keep all of the things separate. So if you're taking out these nails here, you can put them in one compartment. If you want to take out these hooks, you can put them in another. That way they're all separated and organized. Now, even if you're not posting a video online of your project, if you are taking something this intricate apart, I do recommend filming it because one, you can look back at how it was before and see the progress. And you can also figure out what that one singular missing screw belongs to. <laughs> so I do recommend that. And I guess we will get started. Oh, one more thing. Because I have two full-time jobs, this is not going to be a one-day build, one-day project sort of thing. I am fortunate to be busy a lot of the time. So this is going to take a couple of videos to, to do. And I'm sure that it, that you watching probably feel the same way. It's, it's hard to do one project in one day. Some people thrive on it. Other people ha have to take some time um, to do other things that kind of take priority. So just wanted to let you know before I started. For now, I'm going to leave the hinges on here because I do think I'm, I am going to reuse this in my final build uh, so I don't see the, time, uh, the point in wasting time taking this off completely when I'll probably just have to screw it back on. So. And I'm going to take out these nails completely because they're short, they're angled. And they're just, and some of them are pretty rusty, so they're not something I'm going to keep. These hinge screws are the same for the outside and this small piece, so I am going to put them together in the same group. When they hammered in these brads, some of them angled up and pierced through the outer part of the wood. Let me take a closer video for you so you can see. 
but as you can see these brads are angled up so they kind of poke through the wood got a lot on this side that do that as well which isn't good for the stability of the wood itself Some goodies fell out of the pocket. We have, I think this is a tiny little button with either plastic or shell. I think it's plastic, plastic, little eye on the bottom. Watch the Fleece Mills Friday button video if you want to sew on a shank eye like this. And then we have an upholstery needle. So this has a arrowhead like tip and it's bent at about a 15 degree angle and it is a quite large needle. I do have um, one of these and even if I didn't I wouldn't be keeping this because it is very rusty. So all of those are going in my trash can. My tiny little can for trash. All right. hidden pins in here as well. I am trying to be as careful as possible because like I said, a lot of this is rusty. Pins, needles, they're sharp, same with nails. So do take precaution when you're doing this. Now I did get the full first row of nails out. Um, for these second nails, I, I, I do wanna take off this whole cover. So I think I might start on that before going into these nails. Now, I would love to not have to move these pieces of wood uh, because they are nailed into place and then covered, so they are harder to get to. Um, so let's take off the back and start with that. So in construction of this, what they did was fold over all of the rough edges. Some of them are actually overlocked, which is nice. Inside, nailed, especially the green ones, to the, so they started with the green, nailed that to the wooden frame, and then went over with this fabric. Now the reason I'm ripping it and cutting it is because it's not a fabric that I was planning on keeping. Um, so I'm just gonna go along. And my hammer is having a hard time getting under these brads, so that might have to be a journey for another day and then another hammer. That looks like mold. did a layer of vinyl it almost looks like wallpaper on the inside and it does look moldy at the bottom so I am going to be very careful Are you enjoying the Fleece Mills content? If you are and want to support me and what I do more, consider adopting a little octopus friend, like Ophelia here. I hand make them in the USA and they're perfect for gifts and just to lift your spirits. They even have little suckers on the bottom. So go to fleecemills.com if you want to adopt and enjoy the rest of the video. So besides just taking this apart so that way I can create one that's more aligned with what I want. The beauty of, of taking things like this apart is you get to learn from the inside out of how they were made and the steps in which they took. Um, in, in the design world, that's called your order of operations. You need to do A before you do B before you do C in order to get the outcome of the desired look that you want. So what I've 
what I believe that they did for this is they took this green fabric, planned out where they wanted their pockets, um, sewed together this green fabric and the outer fabric for the inside pockets, sewed those right sides together, flipped them inside out into a long tube, then sewed, um, sewed straight stitches in different areas with little arrowheads at the top for added added structure, which I do like that. That does give it a lot of extra stability at the top. Your top point of a pocket is your weakest point. That's why on shirt pockets, they do have little triangles as well. So they sewed the pockets onto the green fabric and then they attached the green fabric with, like I said, what I assume is wallpaper to the frame and then did the outside with the brads. Now this, this piece I'm curious about. So it is a form of plywood, which makes it a lot more stable than the chipboard that we saw in the other one. Fascinating. All right. <laughs> it's like I'm pretty empty now, huh? And this is just one side. So with this spring, one end has a full closure and the other one has a hook. So I'm gonna try to shimmy it off. Um, what I think might help is actually taking the fabric out first, and cutting it off first. So let me start with that. Also may wonder why I'm not using shears um, to cut this and just using a box cutter. I don't want to waste the sharpness of my shears on fabric that is is old, run down, pretty brittle to begin with, <laughs> full of dust, and that I'm just gonna throw out. So this is this is it. All right. Ooh, one little spot. Okay, so that's detached, which makes taking that off really easy. This is fairly rusty, so I'm gonna try to remove it very carefully. Um, there's a lot of mold on the inside of this as well. Now, unlike all the other rusty pieces, I will be keeping this spring uh, for two reasons. One, I am going to try to clean it first because it does look like there is a coating on here. So the rust might just be dust, not sure. Um, and then the other piece is if I need to buy a new one, this is exactly the scale. So I can bring this to the hardware store and ask for one exactly like that. the tiniest screw I've ever seen. I mean, I am holding a tiny screwdriver, but it's so tiny. It's less than a quarter of an inch long. Oh, 
all of the lids have been sealed since now. And this one's Herb Ox. Safety sealed to guarantee quality. It's a cool little vintage lid. This is one side done, minus the brads and a couple of nails that my hammer is just not equipped for. So um, I'm going to do the second side on my own. And in the next video, we'll plan out what kind of pockets, what kind of framework I want to add um, and the layout that I'm going to be going with and all these brads will be off we'll be going over the plan and maybe start painting as well but until then oh, these are big pieces until then i hope you enjoyed this video for fleece Friday, friday and i will see you in the next one bye